Welcome to the Antonine Wall in Scotland. Built in 142 AD, it runs for 39 miles across the centre of Scotland. It was built after Hadrian's Wall, and spoiler alert, it relates to something that I find in today's video. And at the end, after the light box, I'll give you a little few minutes tour around this incredible monument built in the second century. Welcome back to the fields of Perthshire. Well, shortly, probably in the next hour or two, I'm going to go on to the Roman field. But before I do, there's a very small field behind me, which is only one, maybe two acres, which the farmer's mother told me quite a number of years ago, produced some Roman coins in the 1940s or 1950s. We're not far away from the Roman field. Apparently there was a pile of stone and sand that was removed. And in doing so, Roman coins were found. She's no idea how many. She's no idea what date. Um, I've never been able to detect it because until very recently, it's had trees on it, of all things. But the trees have been harvested last winter and the field has just been ploughed to remove all the stumps. So I'm going to give it a go. It might be littered with trash, but you never know unless you try. So we'll give it a bash, maybe give it 20 minutes, or maybe give it an hour or two, uh, depending on how good it is. And then I'll move on to the Roman field, which will probably be the last time I get out because I think the farmer will be planting it tomorrow. So if you're not already subscribed and you like what you see, then hit the subscribe button and let's go and see if we can find some treasure. It's just me today for the moment. Um, as usual, I'm going with program three and all I'm gonna do is change it to square tones. And that is me pretty much good to go. So it's nice and flat. I don't know how many uh, tree stumps I'm gonna dig up. It was uh, little Christmas trees that were in this field, but we'll see how we get on. Only 60 seconds. So far, not a lot of trash. Quite a bit of iron in the background, but that's easy enough to pick out the smaller pieces. Right here, 81, 82. And to be honest, there's an iron tone there. So it could be big iron, could be aluminium. I don't have high hopes, to be honest, but as you know, I always film the first hole. Now, I can feel something in the bottom of the hole, right there, which is a great big bit of iron, right there under the surface. So is it a plowshear, or an axe head, or something else? Well, it's massive, whatever it is. You can see why I got a signal. Oh, it's huge. Look at that. Um, might take me a bit of effort to get this out. Ugh. Oh my god! Well, that's got to be the biggest target I think I've ever had. <laughs> now that is iron. Some sort of big sheet of iron. And I think we'll dispose of that at the side of the field. Not so good. Aluminium. It's not a bit of lead. It's a bit of copper. It's something. Oh, it's like a an eyelet. Like a uh, tarpaulin ring. I forget what they call them in the States, not tarpaulins, but you know what I mean, like a, a plastic sheeting or a cotton sheeting with these little tie downs. Oh well. So far, not so good. Um, 11 targets dug, either all big iron or mostly aluminium. There's lots of polythene and plastic, you can see bits of plant pot, plastic plant pots and all sorts of stuff. So clearly there's been a lot of human activity here. Um, however, I've got an 8687 this time, which may or may not be something good. Ah, it's a coin. I can see it right there. Look, uh, that is probably a halfpenny. Probably 
a half penny. Yep, I think so. Ah, well look who it isn't. Gorgeous George. My God, amazing how many coins of George V we find. It's in really good condition actually. It's very clay soil, very sticky, very heavy. But it's got a beautiful patina. So George V, what year have we got? 1922. What happened in 1922? Um, I seem to remember the BBC was founded because they had their 100 year centenary anniversary uh, just a couple of years ago. So I think that was 1922. Uh, yeah, 1922. So 2022 was 100 years of the British Broadcasting Corporation, or the BBC as it's called in the UK. And uh, 22, I think that's also when Ireland gained its independence from the United Kingdom. So that was also just over 100 years ago. Well, so far, this field, bar that half penny and various bits of iron and cans and such like, has been pretty much devoid of signals, which is really unusual because any field in this part of Perthshire is normally littered full of little copper and bits of lead and coins and buttons and all sorts of things. So for a virgin field, it's surprisingly quiet. But right here, it's a quiet chirpy 86, 87. There's a little bit of pottery there actually, just right there. A little bit of blue and white. Um, possibly Victorian from the 18 or 1900s maybe looks like sort of transfer print but um, but yeah let's see uh, see if we've maybe got a, a decent thing here or not or if this is going to end up on the cutting floor with all the other junk well thank god for that at least it's shallow and that is a juicy looking worm I've had my breakfast though, so we'll pop you back in the hole. I was going to say, that looks like something. There, and it is. Well, we've got something interesting. We have got something interesting. Well, that is a little, possibly a little sort of pendant, isn't it? Well, is there going to be anything on it, is the question in terms of any detail. But that is finally, well, the coin was nice, but uh, this may well be nicer. Let's give it a wee gentle rub. Hmm. It's going to be difficult to get anything off this, I think. It's quite heavy, so I don't know if it's copper or brass or maybe even bronze. As you can see, there's a little hole there for suspension. But yeah, it's a little unusual shaped little tag. I wonder if it was maybe worn on a necklace. But I'll give this a wee rub with the bendy thumb off camera and dry it out and I'll get back to you. Unfortunately, anything that was on it is now completely gone. Can't see any sort of detail. I thought initially maybe there was a letter R, but I think that was just my imagination. Well, what is it? Maybe a little pendant? Maybe a little necklace, a little amulet. I've no idea, but let me know in the comments below. Could be ancient, but I suspect we'll never know. This was a scratchy 81, 82. Uh, it's a little bit of lead, just shallow, just under the surface, but it's the kind of stuff I would expect to be finding in any field in Persia, which has been until this moment completely devoid. But I've done almost 90% of the field. So that's the end of the field over there and I've come all the way almost, what, 10 metres from the edge? So also got that pendant just a few feet away over there. So maybe there's a little bit more activity at this edge of the field, but we'll keep on hunting. Another digger. Quite a crisp sound in 87. So Aluminium or a coin or something else. <laughs> oh, difficult to dig. There's a, it's a big tree root right there. That's a big tree root. 
Oh, I'm not going to be able to dig that, am I? Well, so far I've missed the tree roots until this moment. Right, let's get the pinpointer, see if we can figure out exactly where it is so I dig in the right place. Right by the tree root. Just my luck. Ah, oh, there it is there. Well, that's lucky, at least it's out. So it's a thing. It's a uh, something. I was going to say maybe part of a blade for a knife or something, but I think it's probably more agricultural. Oh, well. This is another 87. Very similar to the last target, which was just six feet away, so maybe another of the same. Well, we're out, but it doesn't sound very good. Oh, what's that? It is like... Oh, it's not the same. It's not the same. What is that? What is that? A miniature golf club? <laughs> well, that's weird, isn't it? It's very weird. Right, there's definitely some writing on there. I think it's aluminium. It's aluminium, but I don't know what it is. Can't really make that out. It's a. Uh, I was going to say it almost looks like the symbol of uh, the Isle of Man. You know, the three legs that all stick out in different directions. You get what I mean? I don't think it is, though, is it? Well, now this is going to come down as of an incredibly bizarre find. Right, I'll give this a proper clean up off camera. And I'll come back to you. Usually it's Pete that finds the weird stuff. But on this occasion, because he's not here, I've found it. I've got no idea what that is. No idea whatsoever. It's chipped at the end. It's solid. It's solid. It feels like an alloy or aluminium. It is almost like a little miniature golf club. Um, so let me know in the comments below. And also if you know what that mark is there on the bottom. I'm at a loss. Well, I did say we were devoid of certain targets, but this end of the field's definitely the busier. Well, for fines at least, rather than junk. But we've got our first button. Four-holer. A four-hole button. Um, not particularly old. Probably around 100 years, give or take. But there probably is a maker on there somewhere. They've normally got a name of a a town and a company, but yeah, I'd guess a hundred or so years old. This one was a week 73, but we've got a little clod shot. I suspect it's a button, don't think that can be a coin, and it is. It's another button, so after saying I'm devoid of things like buttons, I've gone and found two in quick succession. So, yeah, probably going to be 200, 100 years old, give or take, but you can see where the shank has snapped off. But it's a find. Same day, different field. Uh, a car was going by the road end, just as I was finishing on that last field. Uh, and as often the case, the window went down, the car stopped, the window went down. And it was the farmer who owns the land on this side of the road. And he just started chatting, as people often do. Oh, metal detecting. Oh, I've always been interested in history. Uh, and he just said, do you want to try my fields? So I'm not exactly going to say no, am I? So uh, I've just come over onto this field here, which uh, is one of his. So I told him, like anything that I find, you can have. And uh, he seems happy with that. So, uh, well, unless of course we go and find a, or I go and find a massive pot of gold. But uh, he says it's been in his family for over a hundred years, so he, he seems very interested to know what we might find. So let's see what happens. Straight in with an ear blower. 82, 83. I think it's going to just be shallow tin can. Well, there you go. Talk about stony ground as well, but a kick energy hydration drink. I've moved away from the edge of the field because it's just 
trash, trash, trash. Uh, it looks like this field's been broccoli last year. There's lots of little stumps sticking out, so it would have been planted by hand and harvested by hand. So I suspect all the workers have probably been sitting around the edge of the field having their lunches. This is an ear blowing 91. This ground's still really, really stony. Please don't be deep. Thank God for that. Right. Come on, something other than a ring pool or a bit of aluminium. Oh well, oh no, it's a stone. Oh, it's round and I think it's a coin. It is, it's a, it's a spendable though. Oh, it's been on fire or something as well, but let's get the sleeve out. I think the front's gone completely, but the back... I think you can just see the portcullis, you can, like one penny. So this is still in circulation. This is a one pence piece and it's going to be Queen Elizabeth II. But yeah, look at the state of that. Someone mentioned in the comments, it doesn't look like there's going to be much for people to find in a hundred years that we're losing just now. And I think you're right. It's a real shame that we don't have coinage like they used to have. You know, well-made copper and bronze that would last or even silver that would last for hundreds of years. But there we go, a spendable penny. This one was a dodgy 73, 75. It was quite a scratchy signal. And I can see something oval. Oh, it's a heart. <laughs> it's not oval, it's a heart. Well, what is it? Some sort of love token? Literally a love token? It looks like it's got holes in it. So, well, that's a bit different. That is a bit different. So who knows what this might be? Well, give it a gentle rub. Well, the holes are intentional. That's for sure. But, what is it? Could it be a, a dog? Like, no, it can't be. Not with all the holes in it. Like a dog tag, you know, for your pet dog. Well... I'm at a loss to that one. I really, really don't know. I don't see any decoration. I don't see any writing either. And I don't know why it would be filled full of random holes. So, that's a mystery. Maybe a scorned lover put some curse on her farmer boyfriend or girlfriend and uh, decided to drill holes in a love heart, but no idea. I'd guess it's probably, what, a hundred years? Maybe a couple of hundred years old? But I've no idea what its purpose is, so let me know in the comments below. I've got two for one, but it's also a bit hard to swing because of all these uh, broccoli roots here, but here... Get that out of the way. Here, 76, and here, a screamer of an 88, so let's go with a 76 first. Oh no, it's a tin can. Ah, I thought the other one was going to be a tin can, so tell me it's not a double whammy. Okay, signal number two. Well, so much for the new permission so far. It's not going particularly well. But, tell you what, I think I saw... I think I saw something round there. No. Maybe my imagination. Right. Am I even digging in the right place here? Let's get all that loose stuff out. Right, we're out. We're out. And I don't see a tin can yet. Ah! Well, maybe I did see something round. Uh, that, folks, is a coin. Well, coin number two from this field. 
It is a beautifully toned one penny. 1920. I don't believe it. It's George. Again. George V. This man just keeps on coming. So. God, I really need to read up on George V. I'm running out of things to tell you about him. Because <laughs> I seem to find him all the time. But it's a one penny. And uh, just after the Second World War, which... Ended in 1918, the 11th month, uh, sorry, the 11th day of the 11th month, and the 11th hour is when the ceasefire took place. But the uh, the uh, official document, the Treaty of Versailles, wasn't signed until 1919. And uh, yeah, the 20s, well, they were called the Roaring 20s in the United Kingdom because it was a time of of economic boom and prosperity. I think also it was quite a big time. Uh, in America for bootlegging, was it not for uh, for illegal alcohol and so on? But uh, yeah, after all the devastation of the Great War, which claimed what over fifty million people died, then began the uh, the economic recovery, the Roaring Twenties. I hate to say it, we might have another coin. It's an 87, so it could be, oh, I was going to try and take a plug out, but the soil's actually surprisingly soft here. So, is it a coin? Well, it's an ear blower, now it's out. Saying as high as 91. Cartwheel penny would be nice. Well, it's not a cartwheel penny, but I think it is a penny. And it is a penny. Another one. So there's Britannia. Again, it's got a nice, lovely patina. 19, oh, I don't believe it, 1919. So it's George V again. And there he is. Looking to the left. So, well, we just get 1920. Now we've got 1919. So uh, I mentioned Versailles, the Treaty of Versailles, the end, the official end of the Great War, which was signed in. I think March or April of 1919. And uh, there, the end officially of the Great War as it was known then because we'd only had one. So it wasn't till later we referred to them as World War One and World War Two. But, well, three coins, three pence in total. One of them spendable and two not. Nice tone though. Good. I think it's going to be a tin can. 82, 83... A little bit of a tinny sort of tone to it, pardon the pun. Well, there's, nope, that's just a spade imprint from the first hole. We're out. So far, I don't see a tin can. Oh, tell you what, I don't believe it. I think it's another coin. It's a half penny. I don't know why that gave such a big target for such a small coin. It seemed to be the size of a an aluminium can, and I tell you what, I think it's his gorgeous George again, but in half penny form. Honestly, right, I'm going to have to read up on the life story of George V because I've I've run out of ammunition. Not quite so good this one. We're in a a little depression, so it's probably. A bit wetter the ground here and it's not done very well it's quite corroded will we get a date mm, it's looking unlikely get the bendy thumb on there now i think it's gone it would have been right there where that line is but i think it's had it yep i think it's gone so george v without doubt the most Commonly found coin, 100%. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. It's because uh, after the First World War, what I mentioned with the last one, the Roaring Twenties, we went through a period in the UK of, of rebuilding. And more importantly, Britain massively wanted to increase its agricultural production. So loads and loads more people were in the farms, in the fields, working, planting, picking and so on. And obviously all losing coins. So there you go. 
It's probably sometime between 1910 and 1936. This one sounds really nice. 87, it's got to be a coin. It's got to be a coin. Has to be a coin. Oh no, it's vanished. No way. No way. How is that possible? Or is it stuck on the spade? Let me just take this out and see. Well, it's out. I think it could be a coin because I think I'd maybe turned it on its edge. And that's why it kind of vanished. Ah, oh, it's not a coin, but I tell you what. That isn't gold. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't think it is. Oh, I think it's... I don't know what it is, but... I think it might actually... Well, it can't be plastic. Is that definitely it? Yeah, 88 it's given off. Well, that gave me a fright. But... I can't even... It's almost like plastic. There's no weight to it at all. I oh, keep dropping it. <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh, when I saw that wee flash there, I thought... Twice in two days. And I don't know what it is. It's a thing. But it's junk. Damn. Another screamer. Tell you what, I was only coming into this field for half an hour, but I've been seriously distracted. Thankfully, I've got a good amount of time still left today. So hopefully, I'll get over into the other field. The Roman field later. Somewhere there? No. There it is there. Oh, what is that? Big bit of that sort of gunmetal-y type sort of stuff. Find lots of bits like this, lots of fragments. Never understood what the hell they are. This one is kind of scalloped to an edge. A bit fatter at the other side, but no idea. I've always wondered if they're part of guns. But really, I do not know. So if you know, let me know in the comments below. Well, I'm back. I'm back on the Roman field. I had a little catch up with a farmer who uh, gave me the permission, he came down. Uh, he saw me wandering off, so he was interested, he brought his two grandkids down. And uh, he was over the moon with his uh, spendable penny. And then I gave him the, the few pennies and the half penny, and uh, he was blown away. He wondered if the heart-shaped item might actually be a padlock, the back of a padlock cover, which I suppose it could be. Why it would have loads of holes drilled in it, I'm not sure, but there we go. Anyway, I am finally back on the Roman field. Now, I've got a few hours. I've got potentially four or even five hours, but the um, last two times I've been on the Roman field, I've got absolutely nothing. Zero. Zip. So I've been messing about, searching online, and I've decided that uh, I'm going to run with the Relic programme which is going to give me hopefully more depth, more sensitivity. I made a couple of minor tweaks, which uh, I'm probably going to play about with as I'm detecting. But I've got my GPS, I'm going to go to the hotspot and then see what happens. The relic mode is like an all metal mode. So pretty much every single target, including iron, comes up. And then all you do is you look at the, the uh, what do they call it, the VCO, the sort of number that it spits out. And iron comes through 0, 1, 2, 12, whatever. Um, and you're looking for a target that's obviously non-ferrous. And that's my first. It comes through 59. And the bar on the horseshoe is off to the right-hand side. Could be a bit of lead. Could be aluminium. And I think that is it there. And that is foil. Foiled again. Well, the one thing that uh, this program is teaching me, <coughs> because it's all metal, you can hear every, every single tone. My God, the amount of iron in this field is incredible, um, which obviously is being ignored. This time, an 83, 
84, 81. So it's not iron, which is good, hopefully. Who knows? Could be anything. I really don't know. I really don't know what to expect because I've never really used this program before. I don't know if I'm in the hole or out the hole or near the hole. I'm out. Well, it's still an 80. So it's a real trial and error, this program. But as I say, I've been out on this field twice in the last two weeks. Uh, one time I found a half penny that was worn beyond recognition. And the other time, in three hours, I got absolutely nothing good. Because signals are really, really few and far between. We've done this field to death. Literally to death. What is that there? That's it. It's a bit of lead. It's a bit of lead. It's not another lead token or something, is it? It's not. It's a big chunk. A big lump of lead. Let's see. Oh, and good news. Lucky I mentioned that there. Les has been in touch. So Les is the man who made, put together this little device here. Um, <clears throat> He sent me an email for a link, what he figured was probably easiest, quite a number of people have asked about these little items, the brush and the little pokey stick, uh, also with a little carabiner, and he's put together some, which he's listed on eBay, and delivered yours for about £10, which is an absolute bargain, so uh, if you are interested in one of these, I'll put a link in the description, and you can go and... Uh, and have a look and potentially buy one from Les. Highly recommended. Great little brush. So, uh, and also this has been indispensable. I didn't realise how much I needed it until he gave me it. So, uh, yeah, it's a little lump of lead. Who knows? But could be old, but we'll never know. Uh, this is a 71. 72. And uh, only my third diggable target, and I've been in this field for about one hour. Ah, oh, well we've got a coin. Is that a coin? I think it is a coin. It's big and green and round. Don't know why it was so low, 72. Well, it's Georgian, I think, looking at how thick it is. That's possibly why. Well, well that's good. Because, as I say, this is a field that's been done to death. Really, really struggling to get any targets off it at all. I know Martin was out recently and he got absolutely nothing in a few hours. And I know I've been out several times and I've got absolutely nothing. Well, is it a George Georgian in terms of first, second or third? I don't actually... It's a very fat coin, but that brown colour makes it look more like it might be one of the later Georges, George the Sixth. But I don't think it is, is it? I don't think George the Sixth had a coin that fat. But I can see some letters, and we've definitely got the words Georgius. But Georgius the what? George the... I think it is V1. I think it is the 6th. I don't want to rub it up too much because I think if the surface comes off I'm in trouble. I think it is George the 6th. But why is it such a fat coin? Georgios, I think it is V1, and then something something Omni Rex. But I don't know what denomination that is. It's not a penny and it's not a half penny. Could it be a crown or something like that? Well, over to you all. I'm dumbfounded by this one. So let me know in the comments below. This one is an 86. 
I was going to say sounds good, but they all do. <laughs> but uh, let's see what we've got. Oh, we're out. That's weird. That's uh, I think that's reading zero. So that's iron. Ah! Yeah, 85, 86, so whatever it is, is still in the, the, the hole. There's a bit of iron in there as well. Still in the hole. Oh, 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 I'll tell you what, look at that, right there, that is silver coin, that is Roman, 100%, look at that, that is a Roman silver coin, you beauty, you absolute beauty, right, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. I mean, not massively deep, seven inches, eight inches, but massed with an iron target, which is over here, out of interest, is the iron target. Let's pop that on the ground for a second. Just to see what the iron target is. There it is there, look. A great big lump of ferrous iron. I don't know what that is, but it could be some ancient thing, who knows, but let's get the water bottle. I've lost everything. There we go. So, there is, oh no, it's not the coin. What have I done with the coin? Oh, I don't believe it. I sat it on the ground and, oh, there it is. Thank God for that. I picked up the wrong lump of mud. Now that is... A Roman silver coin, 100%. Oh, it's a cracker. It is an absolute cracker. Look at that. Let's pluck it out. If it'll come. Oh, I don't believe it. It's two. It's two silver coins together. <laughs> Are they actually stuck together? No, they can't be. There's, or are they? No, they might be. Or they might actually be stuck together. Oh, look at that. Well, that's a first. That is a first. Oh, they're not quite stuck together. But they're not far off it. Oh, it's got to be a tremendous sign. Are they stuck together? Nope, they're not stuck together. They are separate coins. There you go. Oh, that one's different. <laughs> oh. oh. Two Roman coins, side by side, literally side by side. Well, I've never had two stuck to each other before. That is a first. I think it's actually... Is it the same person? Hmm, maybe. I'm not sure. Right, I'm going to dry these up off camera. You beauty. You absolute beauty. I've been over this field with the Horde Hunter multiple times. No no signals other than big bits of uh, deep iron. And uh, this may well be the last time I'm out, I'm out on this field before it's planted. So to get two Roman silvers is just phenomenal. Um, clearly the relic programme is doing its job. Now, I can't make my mind up. I don't think this is the same person. I think that is possibly Antoninus Pius. 
that one there. Mm, maybe Trajan. Maybe. So Antoninus Pius, he was, uh, he followed, uh, let me think, he followed Hadrian. So he was on the throne from something like 138 to 161 AD. And if this is Trajan, and Trajan was on the throne from about 98 to about 117 AD. I'm not sure if it's... I mean, it could be the same person and it's just this one's very worn. Um, but they're both silver denarii. The reverse is different on both. You've got the usual standing figure. I think possibly a Nona, but I'm not certain. This one, though, is one that I've never had before. That almost looks like a like an altar with things coming out it, kind of like a cornucopia, which is the horn of plenty. I haven't seen one of them before. Again, coins are a bit crusty, a bit green, a bit brown. That's actually, I think, where they were touching. I think the coins were touching just there. You see that brown colour on both. Because I think they were kind of like that. So they were almost touching at that edge, or they were touching at that edge, and there was a gap between them. So I think the the opposing crust is where they were having contact in the ground. But that is fantastic. I'm going to get the GPS out in a sec, record the fine spot, and then have a look and see where the other fine spot is in comparison, or the nearest Roman fine spot. So that is fantastic. So probably early first, maybe even late, uh, sorry, no, late first, and definitely middle second century. That is fantastic. Two beautiful coins. Well, they should clean up quite well when I get home, get the fiberglass pen on them, try and get all this verdigris off. Fantastic. I put the GPS on and the nearest Roman silver coin to these two is 58 metres away. So that is a long way away. A long way away. I was actually making my way to one of the fine spots when I got the signal, which actually was also iron as well. So well done for the relic programme for digging these out. Just spreading out from that coin. It's a bit of a higher reading, 91-ish. Well, it's actually, look. Same again, it's iron. And that's the good signal there. That's weird, isn't it? That's the iron there, look. One lump of. Again, who knows what that could be. But over here is the good signal. Ah! Oh, oh God, I just saw a flash of gold. It's a bloody pound coin. It's a spendable... Well, at least it's a pound. 2017. So it's only, what, six years old. It's actually in pretty good condition. It's a bit green round the edges. A bit greener on the back. But at least I can go and spend this. And I might actually be able to buy something half decent with it. Oh, I oh, got a wee... Whew, that was like earlier with that bit of plasticky looking metal that was gold coloured. Well, it's a pound. At least I can spend it. Other than aluminium, I haven't had anything for an hour and a half. <laughs> In this 63-65 button territory, possibly. But just nice to get a signal that isn't, well, hopefully isn't aluminium or iron. Third spade full. 
we're out. So we're certainly getting, we're getting a lot more signals at depth. But, are they any good? Oh, it's green, it's round. I'll tell you what, it could be another coin. Oh, it's a button. Oh, it's a button. Well, oh well. It's, uh, well, it could have been, could have been worse. I thought I had a Roman bronzy coin there. Look, it's, it's silvered or tinned. You can see the remnants on the surface. You can see where the shank would have been. Could be decorated, could be a livery button. But the detail is no more, completely gone, if there were ever, ever was any. But it's probably got a bit of age to it. 17 or 1800s, I would guess. But it's a find and a welcome one. Well, folks, that is me. May well be the last time that I'm on this field before it's planted. Fingers crossed, the weather gets a bit too rough for the farmer to plant. I can get back on next weekend. Um, but a lot can happen in five or six days. So I suspect this will probably be the last time that I'll get an opportunity. But, well, if it is the last time until August or September, well, what a, what a great end to the detecting season on the Roman field. So we'll go back. We'll uh, have a look at the light box and um, we'll have a closer look at some of today's finds. And if you like what you see and you're not already, then hit the subscribe button. Right, let's go and take a closer look. Welcome to the light box. Well, it's going to be a very short and sweet light box today because I gave everything away to the farmer and his two grandchildren. Now, I've given these coins a little bit of a clean-up, these two silver denarii. As you can see, still pretty crusty. I do have one of these cleaning pens, so I may well give that a little bit of a, a light dusting, try and get some of the surface verdigris off. But this is a silver denarii, and I believe it is Antoninus Pius. So that means it's going to be sometime between 138 and 161 AD. So it's silver. It's probably got a silver content of about 95%. So quite a high purity of silver. And uh, you can see Antoninus Pius looking to the right hand side. The coin is in pretty good condition. It's a bit grey. Um, the reverse, though, is very different from what I'm used to. I think this is probably some sort of altar, maybe a sacrificial altar. So this possibly commemorates someone, maybe someone who died, maybe some sort of victory within the rule of Antoninus Pius. I'm really not sure. I haven't had a chance yet to look it up and I couldn't wait any longer. Um, before I posted the video. Now this one as well, I also think this is Antoninus Pius, although as you can see, when I hold the two of them side by side, they are a bit different, but I think it's because the one on the right is slightly less worn, so you can see more definition in the hair. I think that's the reason why they look slightly different. So do let me know in the comments. I did almost wonder if the one on the left could be Hadrian, but I don't think it is. I think they're both Antoninus Pius. The reverse on this one is a bit more standard. So we've again got quite a bit of crustiness on it, but I've cleaned it up a little bit. And uh, you can see some letters and also a standing figure. So I'm not sure who that is and what it says, but as ever, if you know, then let me know in the comments below. So if this is also Antoninus Pius, then it will again be sometime between 138 and 161. And Antoninus Pius, he was adopted by the Emperor Hadrian not long before his death. And he succeeded Hadrian. He also married Hadrian's niece, who was Faustina. So uh, probably most famous of all was Antoninus Pius, 
uh, reinvaded Scotland. So they moved north from Hadrian's Wall and they built a wall that was about 40 miles long and it ran between approximately Glasgow and Edinburgh, between the Forth and Clyde, two major rivers. And they built a turf and timber uh, a wall which took them about 12 years to construct but it was abandoned uh, pretty much as soon as Antoninus Pius died. Foreign policy changed. So for anyone who knows, I'm also a tour guide. You'll find me on social media, on Instagram, TikTok and Facebook as Visit Scotland Tours, where I do tours all around Edinburgh virtually, but I also do them in person too. So I've got lots of clients, past and future. And uh, I've just set up, to give a shameless plug, I've finally got round to setting up a YouTube channel for my tour guiding. So if you like the historical aspect, if you search for Visit Scotland Tours, so that's Visit Scotland Tours, then you will find me on my new YouTube channel. So feel free to subscribe. Now, just to give you a little taster, um, and because I'm a tour guide, I happen to have a little bit of video of the Antonine Wall. So I thought I would add it in to the end of this video, seeing as it seems to be very relevant. So I hope you enjoy watching it. It's only a few minutes long. And uh, if you're not already subscribed, then hit the button, go and check out my new channel. And if you know who these two are, then please let me know. So I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Detectiveville is looming less than a week away. So we'll see you all on the next video. Thanks for watching. So this is a bit different for the Scottish detectorist, but welcome to the Antonine Wall in the centre of Scotland, or what's called the Central Belt. So I have come to a place known as Rough Castle. Now, Hadrian's Wall is the one that everyone thinks of when they think of Scotland, which is between modern-day Carlisle and Newcastle. But the Antonine Wall was built 20 years later, and it runs between the Firth of Forth in the east and the Firth of Clyde in the west, 39 miles long. And this is part of the defensive ditches of one of the best preserved parts, which is known as Rough Castle. And Rough Castle was a fort. This would have been one of the gateways into the heart of the fort. So you have to imagine this with a, a huge timber palisade defensive wall and a massive door with two huge towers, one either side. And that would defend the entrance into the castle. And this is the southern side of the castle. So effectively, the Roman province of Britannia is off to my right, and the barbarian north, and the Scots, or the Caledonians as they knew them, are off to my left. Because the Antonine Wall was built of turf and of timber, very little of it remains in comparison to Hadrian's Wall, which was built entirely of stone. But as you can see, this is one of the best preserved parts of the Antonine Wall. And you can see the ditch in the distance. So we take a bit of a closer look and you can see the defensive ditch that made up the entire length of the wall, 39 miles from end to end. And it runs from west to east. Construction began in 142 AD and it's called the Antonine Wall because it was built on the, on, the, on the orders of Antoninus Pius. So you can see the ditch cutting right across and running off to the east. It took them 12 years to build, which uh, seems pretty quick, but in comparison Hadrian's Wall was built in six and it was over 70 miles long. So this is the interior of what's left of the castle or the fort. And this would have housed around about 200 Roman auxiliary troops.
And this is us looking at the fort from the northern side, from the Caledonian side, or the Scottish side. And there's a very good storyboard here that shows you how the fort would have looked. So you'll see the little purple dot at the bottom, that's where we're standing. And you can see it was quite a vast fort. This was home to around 200 soldiers. And within the centre of the fort, there were barrack blocks, there were gardens, there were workshops and bathhouses. And this was one of 16 forts that were built, or major forts that were built along the length of the 40 miles or so of wall. So this was no mean feat. That's why it took them 12 years to build. And ironically, within six years of finishing, they abandoned it. So it was only in use for around 20 years, two decades. And that's because Antoninus Pius died and they had a change of foreign policy. And suddenly Scotland wasn't quite so important to them. But this was home to a group of Roman soldiers who were actually from Belgium, modern day Belgium. So I hope you've enjoyed a little look around the Antonine Wall.